What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So, man, you can check out The Problem with Money in the Bank by Superkick Studios. Now, I remember when Money in the Bank was introduced at WrestleMania and how it was like one of the few matches on the WrestleMania card outside of other storylines finally uh, culminating at the show. It was one of the few matches that a lot of people, including myself, was looking forward to because it was kind of uh, a telltelling sign that whoever won that match is going to potentially be one of the new top stars in the company it kind of was that that molding match to let fans know hey this is who wwe is behind and over the years it hasn't obviously been like that they made it its own pay-per-view at first i wasn't in agreement for it being its own pay-per-view but over time i've gotten used to it and i'm okay with it being its own pay-per-view in a sense and then the women had their own money in the bank ladder match uh added as well and then just over time i feel like it the people that have won recently haven't really been spotlighted correctly well i mean obviously the most recent one was austin theory but he he won his at the probably the most improper time to win it since he won his during the you know the roman reigns era that's still currently going on and at that time we didn't have the world heavyweight championship so roman pretty much had the belts hostage you know what i'm saying so it's just one of those type of things where the, recently it hasn't been as important like the people that's won hasn't really benefited from it like they used to back in the day so we're gonna check this out man see what he has to say uh this is uh by superkick studios been subscribed to them for a while link to the original video will be down below and let's see what he has to say about money in the bank and how it's been utilized uh as of recently money in the bank contract a brand new creative element used to help those on the cusp of taking that next step into the upper echelon of wwe superstars get a world championship match whenever and wherever the only thing you needed was the presence of a referee and early on the concept was a hit it was mm -hmm. helping people ascend to new heights giving stars an opportunity to be top guys and carry world championship gold the past few years however wwe has strayed away from everything that made it a success and it's been a complete mess yeah. the execution and track record has been astronomically poor and this is coming from someone who's a huge fan of the concept and honestly just wants to see it return to its old glory creative elements stop being special when you stop making them special and the money in the bank contract holders have really felt like afterthoughts the past little bit not suggesting mm -hmm. that everyone has but we haven't seen the concept do what it's designed to do and that's elevate most of this coming down to the core of most on-screen wrestling problems and that's booking and of mm -hmm. course the selection of the winners let's talk about last year's winner austin theory first what happened with this cash in was effectively WWE devaluing what should be a golden ticket to superstardom and the world championship, saying to their fans that we had no end goal in mind with this. Nope. He cashed in what should be a world title match on a mid card championship in an open challenge, no less. To I believe recently they've come out and said that the uh, the winner can cash in. Obviously, he did, you know, it was done last year, um, but they can cash in on a uh um the intercontinental championship or the united states championship which i think is i get it you can but it's stupid only because the original concept is for you know cash in on the world champion on the top champion they only did I'm, i believe this is uh become a new rule correct me if i'm wrong i did see uh, someone post this so i don't know how accurate it is but if that's the case the adding that stipulation it's just a way for them to write themselves out if they can't find a reasonable time to cash it in. I don't know, man. I just think the Money in the Bank winner should be only going for the top titles. It shouldn't be going for the mid-card titles. That's just my opinion. To repeat, Austin Theory chose to cash in his almost guaranteed world championship victory on a secondary title during an open challenge that no one answered after his opponent had been beaten into a pulp and he lost yeah. there was no real justification as to why we didn't have someone come out and even attempt to preserve the concept the rules were just changed on the fly and another cash in was wasted yep. in retrospect the field cash in stings more now that we have the world heavyweight championship but okay i guess it does make some sense there was virtually no way he was beating roman i'll give them this one but let's keep going but that's the problem they did that to themselves 
They did that to themselves. They they booked Roman to have both the titles. They didn't split the titles. They didn't do nothing. So, of course, Austin Theory was screwed. There was no way he was winning. At least if they would have, he would have tried to cash in and failed. And then you could have went with that storyline where Austin says, screw it, and goes rogue on everybody. I would have went with that. But they booked themselves into that corner. The year previous was one of the very few bright spots in the contracts past six or seven years, and mm -hmm. that was Big E. Someone who was a logical winner, a guy who needed something to bring him to that top tier, and he ended up becoming WWE Champion. His subsequent reign was not handled well, and he was made no. to look like a weak WWE Champion, oftentimes taking a backseat to whatever his challengers were doing. But what the contract did was give him that initial reign, put his name with elite company so that they can build from there, with stronger booking, the right tweaks, a more serious approach, and of course, health permitting, Big mm -hmm. E can still be a big player for the WWE. By virtue of his win, it at least did something to say that this guy belongs here. There's been so many times where the following reign after the cash-in just isn't strong, but once you put them up in the conversation with former WWE champions, you gotta do things to sustain their credibility and justify the win. Before him, Otis won the Money in the yeah. Bank contract, and this was a disaster. WWE had no idea what to do with him. You could tell that they didn't have plans for him to win a world title or nope. be a main guy. And through his reign as Mr. Money in the Bank, he was never a threat. Always goofy. The contract was a lunchbox at one point. Yeah. And you knew this guy's in a tag team. There's no way he actually does it. What made matters worse was when he lost the contract, it was because of his tag partner Otis who turned on him. The turn was never explained, they didn't have a proper rivalry, and they ended up drafted to Raw and SmackDown with it never going anywhere. Otis went back to being a tag wrestler. If they planned for him to do something, why'd he just it regress? It was pointless. That's the full <laughs> that was pointless. that's been missing. It was thrown onto him for the sake of shit. I don't even think I watched that Money in the Bank that year. I don't think... Uh... I believe that was the Money in the Bank. They was on top of WWE headquarters. Correct me if I'm wrong. I saw clips of, you know, <laughs> my boy Ray getting tossed off the top of the building. But, uh, no, nah, I don't even think I watched Money in the Bank that year. Shock value. Eventually, The Miz won the contract from Otis, and he failed his cash-in, got it back via storyline shenanigans, cashed in, won the world title for a grand total of eight days. Mm -hmm. And what did that eight days really do for The Miz? Transitional mm -hmm. champion and WWE just wasted another go-around for the concept. The others in that match, AJ Styles, Aleister Black, Daniel mm -hmm. Bryan, and Baron Corbin. Getting to Corbin, he failed his cash-in, and I feel like this is where the whole unraveling from Money in the Bank really started back in 2017. Corbin fell flat on his face, and personally, yep. I'm not sure how I would have felt if he would have succeeded just two months after holding the Money in the Bank. Was it the right time for him? I don't know. After him, it was Braun Strowman who won, and this was actually logical in terms of the winner. A guy who had been yeah. around for two years, they let him develop, be part of big storylines, showcase him, and now he just needed something to take that next step. He cashed in ahead of time, got his match with Roman Reigns at Hell in a Cell. That match ended in a no contest when Brock Lesnar showed up and tore the cell door <laughs> off. Sticking with Lesnar, 2019's <laughs> men's match saw Just him win. And I love Brock Lesnar as much as the next guy, but he didn't need it. At the time, there was probably a much easier and less convoluted way to get to Rollins and Lesnar at SummerSlam while Which also giving the opportunity to maybe a McIntyre or a Balor. That These are just so a few stupid. examples of, of the mess that's been on of a the match. men's side. But the men's is nothing compared to the rushed out product we've been getting on the women's side. Of the six winners, five of them have held it for a day or less. Aside from the cash-ins, it's barely got a history behind it in terms of actual holders, in terms of actual sustained Miss Money in the Bank runs. The women's match was introduced in 2017, and up until this point, we've had one woman, that being Carmella, who's had a sustained run with the briefcase. And even the way in which they crowned the first Miss Money in the Bank was more convoluted than it needed to be, with them making amends on the very next SmackDown. Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, and Bayley all cashed in their contracts within hours of their win at that same event. Nikki A.S.H. just 24 hours later while Asuka was awarded the Raw Women's title again 24 hours after she won, though that's no fault of her own. Yeah. Is it now, Mr. Rollins? I want to talk quickly about Nikki <laughs> Not Cross's Not Mr. Win. Rollins is his fault. He couldn't pull out. <laughs> I said earlier how this can help someone stay at that top tier of superstars. Her title reign lasted 32 days. She didn't do anything inspiring during her time as Raw Women's Champion. 
and she hasn't even sniffed the top end of the women's division since. In the women's case, it really feels like they want that contract to be done with as soon as possible. Yeah. And they opt for creating cash-ins the night of rather than playing the long game. Yeah. This concept shouldn't be given a pass. It can be better. It should be better. But they're just going through the motions with it every single it year. If it works, it works. Year, if it doesn't, well, there's always next year. With the winners, you're not just devaluing the concept, you're losing development time. You're losing months of having someone assume that role and what could have been an easy decision by just selecting someone who's hot, instead turns into a muddled mess because of shock value and the selection they go with. Mm -hmm. You don't just create a new star because they win money in the bank. My examples are always Rollins and Edge, that when this concept is given care and time, can be a game changer and really help the trajectory Bats. of someone's career. Of the 28 cash-ins, men's and women's, only Austin Theory, Baron Corbin, and Damian Sandow have actually lost the match. Even though Cena failed his cash-in, he still won the match via DQ. Strowman's was a no contest, so the success rate is high. And that's not suggesting that every cash-in needs to be a successful one or that every yeah. winner needs to tease cashing in multiple times before they do, but just keep them as a threat and use the time while they're holding it to your advantage. I read online that some people want to see the concept retired. I really disagree with that. No. I don't think you really can with how big money in the bank has gotten. Plus, what's the point of putting it away for a little bit and then making a big deal of it when it returns, I think the revival of it should come in the way that the holders are booked. A good yes. cash-in creates drama, tension, suspense, and when done right, leaves you with a moment that a superstar's career was either catapulted or revived. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about this year, who should be Mr. and Miss Money in the Bank. I think it's LA Knight's time. He's got everything let's to get be it. a classic Money in the Bank. Let's get it going. Let's, let's simple, simple. I saw uh we didn't live stream Monday Night Raw uh, last night, um, but I did see LA Knight coming out there to address everyone that's gonna be in Money in the Bank. I believe Logan Paul, uh, even though he didn't have to qualify <laughs> like everyone else, he's Logan Paul, so he gets to be granted into Money in the Bank. And I saw just LA Knight's promo, just talking about the different wrestlers and how it was it 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 worked. When he, as soon as he got out there, he had a huge pop. Crowd loved him. Crowd chanting his name. It, if they don't give him the belt, they have wasted our time. They've wasted his time. There's no reason why he shouldn't win. He's that over. And I have him hold the belt to the right time. Hell, I would have him cash in on, you know what I'm saying? You can have him cash in on the Seth Rollins. Or maybe wait till Cody Rhodes went in. You can have him cash in on Cody Rhodes. It don't matter. There's plenty of options here. He's over. Push him. They don't push him at money in the bank that they've wasted everybody's time. If he don't win, they've wasted everybody's time, bro. If they give it to Logan Paul, I'm gonna very be very disappointed because Logan, he's a he's one he's a special attraction. Dude is fantastic in the ring, so I will give him all the credit. But he doesn't need the money in the bank. I think that should be reserved for people that are there weekly. Because that, no, no. It's LA nice time. Bank holder. He's going to be a guy who, if given the opportunity, will have the ideal run with it. He'll be funny. He'll cut great promos. He'll be sleazy. He'll be entertaining. And these are the times. Yes. The pinpoint moments where you can just see. He needs the money in the bank. He needs Let it. him continue to build for a few months and use that device to bridge him over into that next level. They should pull the trigger on him. So far, the men's money in the bank ladder match has no former world champions, and that's really cool. You that's have a good. big opportunity in front of you. On the women's side, Io Sky is a solid option, though for I sure. think what they're doing with Zoe Stark so early is pretty good. A money in the bank win could position her really well, especially since she's a heel. She'll have that exposure working with Trish, and down the line, if you want to do something where Trish ends up winning a women's title only for the student to cash in on the teacher. I think that would be a that. huge star a making good, cash in. Of one. course, if she continues to work with Trish for a sustained period of time, that would also give her the right amount of screen time for audiences to get familiar with her so it wouldn't feel as rushed either. At the end of the day, this concept has been so strangely booked 
and I just want to see it return to its old glory. It's been such a mess the past few years, and it's by WWE's own fault. Mm -hmm. Elevation is key, and that's what this concept is at the core of things. Money in the Bank is a plot device and a way to get someone to that next level without having to do all the extra bits in the middle. At one time, this concept was so instrumental in bridging the gap between a mid-carder and a main event level player or helping someone that's lost the limelight return to that glory. The amount of moments and legendary Money in the Bank runs we've had have been great and it's so pivotal in kickstarting a big storyline or tying up one that's been going on for a while and lately, it hasn't been doing any of that. But mm -hmm. what do you guys think? What needs to happen in order for Money in the Bank to gain some prestige again and not just be there? Like I said, pick strong winners, position them to look good while they hold it, keep them as a constant threat to the champion and not just some chump who has it as a prop. Hope you guys have been enjoying the up. I agree with what he was saying. It's pretty much, he, he nailed it. All they need to really do is pick the, uh, pick the winner and have them create the story, create that, enhance their character with the run. You don't need them to cash in the night of, especially on the women's side. They've been doing that so frequently. They just cash in as soon as they get it. You don't even have that time. So people are initially hyped. Okay, this person won or it was a shocking moment. But then when they win it, then that's it. And then that's when the fall starts. That's when people stop caring because you haven't built it up enough for people to even really truly invest in you in you or people to buy in into this person being the new champion. So have them hold the belt, create storylines and, and potential teases and opportunities built with that person. Have that person built up with that briefcase. You know what I'm saying? That's that was really the tool. Them winning the briefcase is cool, but now it's to showcase to everybody this is gonna be the, the next person up, potentially. You know, because you know, you don't have to always have them successfully cash in, which is why I think Austin Theory trying to cash in on Roman and failing would have made sense because Roman just had too many weapons at his disposal. And you can do that, that makes sense. He wasn't gonna lose it anytime soon. So I think honestly, it's just building up these storylines with these wrestlers that went in instead of just easily having them cash it in right as soon as they get it. You know, build up those storylines. And honestly, Money in the Bank is right around the corner. So that's why I wanted to check out this video. And I'm just being honest with you. If it's not LA night, it's a waste. Sorry. And it shouldn't be Logan either. I like Logan Paul and what he's done in WWE, but it should be LA night. That's it. In my personal opinion. So comment down below. Let me know what are what other better ways they can, uh, I guess, utilize Money in the Bank. Make it seem a little bit more special than it has been in the past couple of years. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.